there are several of you friends family that have facetimed me texted me called me uh, my sister yes i know you're listening to this <laughs> call me every day for a while <laughs> Um, about the sandwich bread with the active dry yeast and sourdough stuff. So I just wanted to kind of go over some of the issues that I had helped a lot of them through, um, just in case some of you are, are dealing with the same things. And then, you know, you don't have my phone number, so you can't just call me or text me whenever you want to. So I want to talk about that. I did have a list. Somewhere, I cannot find it. Um, a list of things that I wanted to cover and go over and talk about. So, most of, really all of my videos, I just kind of wing it as I talk. I did have a list to make sure I covered everything for this one, but we're going to be winging it again. So, um, I did have a plan of talking about the active dry yeast bread separate from the sourdough, but depending on how my brain is going to work during this whole thing, they might kind of go together. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully I get everything covered. If I don't get everything covered, please just leave a comment under the video with any questions. Or I do have an email address. If you go to the channel page under the channel description, there should be an email address if I put it on there correctly. Um, there should be an email address on there if you need to send me pictures or, you know, something kind of lengthy needing some help or something, you could always send an email on there. But starting out, I want to say at least with four people that I've been trying to help, um, I want to say the biggest thing with four of the six <laughs> is patience. Um, with the active dry yeast bread or sourdough, especially with sourdough, you just ha it does take patience. Now, the active dry yeast bread, it is a lot faster than doing a sourdough bread, um, but it does still require patience. So when, when you're mixing your breads, and so let, let's do the active dry yeast. So if you're mixing your active dry yeast with your warm water, your sweetener, um, if you're adding any kind of fat like butter, oil, whatever you choose, you do want to make sure one, well this goes for both of them really, one, always use filtered water. I guess we're getting away from patients for a minute, but always use filtered water. Both of them 100% use filtered water. If you have any hint of chlorine, especially with sourdough, oh my goodness, especially with sourdough, active dry yeast is a little more forgiving because it's more of a man-made style yeast. Um, sourdough, you're completely organic. And so you definitely need to watch any kind of chlorine that might come in contact with that because it's it's your yeast is not going to respond to that well so always make sure you're using filtered water and then the temperature of your water needs it it, it can't be too hot um i'd say between between 90 and 100 degrees i have gotten up to 110 which is ideal baby bottle temperature so as long as your baby bottle temperature if you're used to doing that, if you're not used to a baby bottle, then um, whatever water you're using, just put a drop of it on the inside of your wrist. And if it's too warm for the inside of your wrist, then it's going to be too warm for your yeast. Um, if you have a thermometer, you're looking for a range of 90, I'd say to 105 just to be safe. But um, if it is too hot, it's going to kill your yeast. And it, I mean, it, it's, that's what's going to keep your bread from rising. So always make sure it's not too hot. Another way to make sure that you're going to get, a, that your yeast is going to be okay and give you a good rise is to put the warm water, um, pour it into your yeast that has the sweetener in it and, you know, do a little mix so you can kind of stir everything up, wake up that yeast a little bit. Wait a few minutes and see if it foams up. And if it does have a good foam to it, then that means that your yeast is fine. Your yeast is happy, the water was not too hot, and um, that gives you a chance to check that before you start wasting all of the flour and other ingredients you're gonna put on top of it. So if you wait 
and you see that everything is nice and foamy, then you can go ahead and measure out your flour and whatever else you're going to be putting in it. And um, so that way, you know, if you do have a problem down the road with baking after baking or whatever, you know it's not from your yeast because you saw that it was foamy, it was happy, everything was fine. So the next thing after that, now we're going to go back to patience. And once you mix up your dough, well, I guess we, we need to talk about dough texture, don't we? So let's talk about dough texture before patience. And once you mix up your dough, you want to mix it. So the longer you mix it, the more the gluten forms. And so you want to, at first you're, you're going to, I say that the, at least the first four or five minutes, you're going to be looking at it thinking it's not going to come together. And so I always mix my dough 20 minutes. And then I go back and check it to see if I need to add any flour, what kind of texture it's looking like. Is it too sticky? Um, to let me know, I, I, I wait the 20 minutes f before I decide if it's okay to stop or not. Um, I will not look at it before 20 minutes because sometimes when I do, even with how much I have made bread, sometimes if I look at it before 20 minutes, I end up putting too much flour, then my bread's a little crumbly. Um, or I start feeling a little anxious about it. So I wait 20 minutes. I, I mean, if you're mixing it by hand, you can't really do it the way that I do and walk away from it. You're just going to have to keep mixing. But since I'm using the stand mixer, I put everything in there. I put the stand mixer on and I let it mix and I'm cleaning the kitchen. I'm doing dishes. I'm dealing with the kids I'm whatever needs to be done. Maybe even go and clean the bathroom or something. But wait 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, come back and check it. The texture of your dough that you're looking for is you're wanting it smooth with no lumps. Um, you want it really silky. If you pull on it, you don't want it super sticky to where it just feels wet um, and it's sticking really, really bad to your fingers. If you pull a little bit up, you want it um, you want it to stretch. You don't want it to break right away because if it's stretching, then the gluten is, is formed pretty well. If it just breaks right away, it needs to be mixed a little longer. If it is sticking just really bad to the bowl, really bad to your fingers, not really holding much of a shape at all, then you might want to add a little bit more flour. And I would say add um, a tablespoon at a time of flour because you can keep adding flour if you need to, but once that flour is in there, if you've put too much, you're not exactly going to take it back out. So I would add a, a tablespoon at a time of flour until it, it's able to stretch without breaking and um, it's not sticking to your fingers super, super, super bad. Um, so after that, once you get the dough consistency like you need, then you will take it off, cover it, and let it rest. This is where the patience comes into play, okay? I, in a lot of my videos, I say like I let it rest for an hour. It, the amount of time for it to rest, when, when you're wanting it to rest, you're, you're waiting for it to really double in size. Um, let that yeast rest, let the gluten rest, let the dough rest, and the yeast do its job to get the dough to rise, make sure you have a lot of activity, get that, the little air bubbles, um, in the dough and so it the, the temperature of the room or the environment that it's in does play a part in that so for me when I'm when I say that mine's been sitting on the counter for an hour yours might need a little bit longer when I sit mine on the counter I cover it um, I have some linen covers I'll put on top or I'll even use like a beeswax cover and I sit it on top of my counter next to my stove. Now my stove, my oven, one of them or both are usually always on. And so that whole area is typically really warm. Like even if our house is in the 60s, around the stove is going to be a little bit warmer because it, it's on. It's been used. It's, it's hot right there. So um, it is in heat. Um, so it usually takes my dough about an hour. And then it's ready to go ahead and form into whatever I'm going to form it into. Now, if you don't have that same kind of environment, it could take up to two hours before it really doubles. If you do need to speed that up a bit, 
one thing that I have done before is I've put my bowl with my dough or whatever you're you're letting your dough rise in I've set it um, in one of my upper cabinets and closed the cabinet door and so that's usually a little more humid there a little more warm because heat rises so that's an option another thing you can do is you can put it in your oven with the light on it does your oven does not have to be on and you really don't want your oven on um, so you can put it in the oven with the light on because the lights usually warm enough the oven seals very well so it's not going to get any cool drafts or anything in there so that's a pretty good environment if you want to try to speed it up um, now be careful <laughs> that nobody turns the oven on <laughs> And uh, cause that is really disappointing. I felt one of my friends um, sent me a picture. She was finally making bread. I can't remember if it was, I don't remember if it was her first loaf she was trying or maybe her second, I'm not real sure. But yeah, her husband went and turned the oven on and she had her bread rising in the oven, um, trying to speed up the process. And yeah, he turned the, the oven on. I think it was like 400 degrees and yeah, that kind of broke my heart for her. But um, yeah, just just make sure the lights on maybe put a sticky note do not use or something um, Even to remind yourself because you don't want to turn the oven on yourself um, so that is a way to speed it up, but With the active dry yeast you do you're, you're wanting it to double if it if it doesn't double and you're trying to work it a little too soon um, it might not rise. I mean it could still be good like even if it's not fully doubled like you can still get bread out of it it just might not be quite what you're expecting when it comes to the second rise and how it bakes up. Um, so then, let's just say our bread has doubled. So we're going to take it out. You can take it out on a floured surface, work it just in your hands. Um, I coat my hands with coconut oil. You can even use some filtered water on your hands. And um, you know, just work it however you're going to do it, whether you're doing sandwich bread or if you're trying to form it in a ball, do like more of an artisan loaf type thing. And, um, and then you bake it. So you're going to do 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And I always say 30 minutes. For me and my oven, 30 minutes does great. But your oven might be a little bit different. Now, this is something I had to talk about with my sister, too. So um, one of the problems that she had is she, hers, um, she said it, it wasn't risen up. It was still kind of dense, but she found out it was a rising issue. She wasn't letting it rest quite long enough. And then, um, then it was a baking issue. So... Because one time she let it rise and she said that, that it wasn't really dense anymore, but it was still a little gummy. So she baked it the 30 minutes, she took it out, she put it on a cooling rack and let it cool for, I think she said 30 minutes. And, but it was a little gummy. So I said, okay. I said, do try to bake it for 32 minutes. And she said that, that was much, much better. So her oven, which my oven's gas and her oven's electric, I know that the the different ones, they all cook different. So um, if 30 minutes, if you're having that gummy issue too, and you you know that you've let it rest at a good enough time after you took it out the oven, then maybe just go up two minutes on your time and see what it does then. If, it, if you're like, oh, well that was like almost good, but still not quite where I want it, Maybe try another minute or two and um, go from there and see, see what you might need. But um, so, you know, yeah, for me, it's like 30 minutes does great. For her, 32 minutes does great. So you kind of have to play around with that yourself because um, that depends on how your oven's going to cook. Now, I, th I think that's pretty much for the active dry yeast. I think that's pretty much all I know to say from the different things that I've had to help people with oh, oh, oh after let's do after you form it whether you're going to be forming it into a sandwich loaf or an artisan loaf um when you stick it in the pan that you're going to be baking it in and then you do another rest just cover it lightly you don't you really don't have to cover it at all if you don't want to but just cover it with a light towel or some kind of cloth um and then let it let it rest for at least 20 to 30 minutes it will do a lot of rising in that time as well but um at least 20 30 minutes and if you want to one thing that i do 
is I, I set my pan that has the dough for the second rise, I set it on top of my stove while I'm preheating my oven to the 350 degrees and um, it, it gets that warmth from the oven preheating and so it helps it do a good rise there as well. If you don't let it rise enough after messing with it and then putting it in that pan for the second rise, if you don't let it rise enough there, it might not be a good enough texture for you too. So go ahead, let that rise about 20, 30 minutes. Usually for me it's 20 minutes, but um, I think for my sister she let it, I, I wanna say she let it rise again for a whole nother hour. I'm not real sure. She can correct me if she needs to. Um, but you know so I mean it might be a little different but you'll you will see it rise you just you know you want it to rise a little bit um, you know no make a note of where it is in your pan when you set it on there to rest again and then you, you just you want to see some kind of rising done before you put it in the oven to bake it okay so let's try sourdough okay the, the biggest thing with sourdough is you want filtered water you do not want the chlorine to touch your sourdough um, you want unbleached flour I don't know um, if this is like a thing for everybody if everybody's gonna have an issue with bleached flour but pretty much everyone <laughs> that I I mean we don't use bleached flour so I don't have to worry about it but everyone that I have helped get through sourdough problems when we finally changed their flour from bleach to unbleached, they didn't have any more problems again. Um, so I, I, I do believe it is important. I mean, if you can't have chlorine with your sourdough starter, then I mean, bleach probably isn't going to do well either. And then um, if you are working with parchment paper, I mean, really anything with sourdough, I'm very, very careful if you're working with parchment paper. You probably don't have to necessarily have unbleached. I don't know if that's really going to play a huge part, but we, I personally use unbleached and you know, the, the people who I've had to help through having problems, we just, we took all the bleach, everything out and of course no chlorine and they've been very successful. So I would say if you can do unbleached flour unbleached parchment paper if you're using parchment paper you don't have to but if you are and then um, just no chlorine like make sure you're using filtered water if you don't have a way to get filtered water then go to the store and use distilled water um, get some distilled water and use that but that is like the biggest thing and then when I am going to talk more about a starter because I do have another video that I mean I do have it done my starter that I've been working on for a how to start a sourdough starter video it is ready um, I've, I've videoed everything it's done I just have to put it all together and like I said earlier it just it has not been a week that I've wanted to spend my all my time doing these videos so um, I am working on that I will go more in detail about a sourdough starter and the different terminologies that go along with that but when you're making sourdough bread you do want to use an active starter so that means you want to see a lot of bubbles and you want your starter to have risen up in whatever container you're keeping it in um, so a spent starter or a discard is a starter that you fed it, it's done the bubbly hap happy thing, it's risen, and then it fell back down. You might still see some bubbles, but it's not fluffy, it's not risen up, it's gone flat again. Um, that That's called discard or a spent starter. It's hungry, it's not real happy anymore. So when we say you need an active starter, you need a, a freshly fed starter that has had time to sit for a few hours, get nice and bubbly, get get fluffy and foamy and rising up your jar. If it has risen up your jar to the max it'll go and then you see that it has slowly started falling back down, you can still use that, it's fine. That's still an active starter. You just can't use it, well I say you can't. You can, 
but the texture that you're probably going to be more happy with is you can um, you really don't want to use it once it's fallen all the way back down so make sure it's nice and bubbly and active and, and risen up um, and that's the starter that you want to use to start mixing your bread and the once you start mixing it the the texture thing is kind of the same you want to keep mixing it you want that nice silky smooth texture you don't want the lumps if you have lumps in it and it's not real smooth that's called a shaggy dough you'll probably hear you've probably heard people or will hear people talk about a shaggy dough that's a shaggy dough it's lumpy it's not real incorporated well it's not together nice silky smooth that's shaggy so you do want to go ahead just keep mixing it keep kneading it till it gets nice smooth silky um, you want it to have some kind of form to it now with the sourdough you, it doesn't have to be like a hard ball or anything but you do want it to be able to hold its shape a little bit um, you don't want it too 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 sticky to your fingers if it is then go ahead add you know a tablespoon at a time a little bit more flour um, but you don't want it too sticky to your fingers you want again to be able to do the a stretch just a little bit without it breaking right off the bat I mean eventually if you stretch it too far it will break but you want to be able to stretch it a little bit without it you know breaking immediately it's called a window pane test you want to be able to stretch it thin enough to where you can see light coming through it and it's not just tearing apart um, and then when you're when you're covering it um, with the sourdough since you're letting it sit out so long if you cover it with a towel you do want to make sure the towel is nice and moist to help hold in some moisture so your dough doesn't get really dried out and crusty on top. Um, you can also cover it with some plastic or with a bees wrap, something like that. But you do, uh, you want to try and keep some moisture in it because it will be sitting out, you know, like six to eight hours, something like that. So um, once, once it's rest has rested on the counter it sat out it's had a chance to to ferment do its rise that's also called a bulk ferment um, do its rise you want to take it out form it into however you're going to do it whether it's a sandwich loaf or artisan loaf whatever you're going to do with it um, you you're looking for you put it on the counter fla lightly floured surface if you need to and then form it and you want it to once you form it you want it to be able to hold that shape if you're trying to form it and it's constantly spreading out on you you might want to think about kneading some more flour into it just sprinkle some flour on top of it and just start kneading it a little bit um, because it might still have a little too much moisture and you are for, for it to to work properly the way that you're really expecting the end result to be you want it to be able to hold its shape if you're forming it into a ball you want it to be able to form into that ball and, and hold that position if you're if you're trying to get it into a sandwich loaf you want it to be able to look like a sandwich loaf and not just spread back out into a glob um, so make sure you know if you are having glob issues <laughs> to add some flour work the flour back into the dough knead it a little bit longer and um, that should take care of that problem um, I'm trying to think anything else with sourdough okay so when it goes to baking it um, you know different things that you're making with the sourdough you know like bagels and bread um, oh what else like um, cinnamon roll something like that all of those are going to have different baking times so I'm not really going to go over that because baking times baking temperatures because I don't know really what you're planning on using your sourdough for um, but the common denominator for any of it is steam is what helps the sourdough rise in the oven um, it's the steam the moisture so like when I'm making my sourdough bread loaf or even my sourdough artisan, what I do is after I form it into the shape that I want, I stick it into the refrigerator and I leave it in the refrigerator overnight or during the day, whatever, however it worked out that I made it. 
and so when I take it out I go ahead when I'm ready to bake it I go ahead I whatever I'm baking it in I'm putting it in the oven and preheating that and then when I um, I guess I really don't do this for my sandwich loaf because I'm not covering it but for my artisan especially I'm, I'm preheating my pan um, in the oven while my loaf is still in the refrigerator and then when the pan is ready I take my loaf out I go ahead and score it however it needs to be scored however you plan on scoring it and then I'm putting that into the hot pan so I'm putting something cold into something very hot that's gonna make it sweat that's gonna cause steam and that's what rises it up if you're having um, steam issues or yours just really isn't rising well what you can do is you can put a couple of ice cubes in the pot with the dough and that will create a lot of steam um, if that doesn't work and that, that's that's for a, pl a pot that you're gonna have a lid on um, I haven't done for things that you're not gonna have a cover on top like if you're you know doing a sandwich bread or um, maybe some buns or something um, I haven't personally done this but I have seen people they would put like a, a cookie sheet underneath um, whatever it is that they're baking and they will fill that cookie sheet of course it, it's you know like a baking pan like one that has the edges on it and they will fill that with some hot water and they they keep that in there while their sourdough is baking and that helps create steam in the oven and helps it rise up really good um, and once no matter which however you do it once you take it out from baking you do want to let it sit on the cooling rack just like with a um, you know a yeast bread you want to sit on the cooling rack and let it cool for 20 to 30 minutes now sourdough can get a very um, hard crust on it and it's gonna come out of the oven feeling really hard anyways I know my sister called me one time she tried the um, sourdough sandwich bread she's like it's as hard as a rock I said yes that's normal <laughs> like it, if you're baking sourdough it's always gonna come out pretty hard like the outside is just really hard it will soften um, one thing you can do is you can just get a towel and wrap it in a towel and let it cool in that towel for the 20 30 minutes and that you know that also creates like a steam a humidity and it helps soften that bread even if you choose to not do that it'll, it will be okay it's still gonna soften it's not gonna be as hard as it feels like when it first comes out so um, I know that was one of her concerns I was like oh no no no, that's normal it's okay and I you know I forget to tell people these things too because I thought I would remember what it was like for me starting out you know all the questions and, and things that I just didn't understand and I was kind of surprised on how much of that I actually forgot because I've done it so many times for so long that I forgot a lot of the questions and things that I was stumped on until I had all these people coming to me with theirs so I was like oh yeah I, for I forgot to tell you like that's okay or oh yeah I forgot about this and um, so anyways that's that is all I can really think of sorry this video was so long um, but that's all I can really think of troubleshooting wise on issues that people have had or even things that that I've run into myself um, so again if y'all still have any questions or you're you know not real sure on something and you want to try to send me a picture or something like that and we can talk about it um, you know leave a comment under the video or go and find the email on the um, the channel page under the channel description it should be under there and send me an email you know with a, a picture attachment or something and I can try to help you that way but I hope that all this information helps I hope it all made sense to you and um, I promise I am going to be getting that sourdough starter video out I'm hoping by next Saturday so this video is coming out on Saturday and so um, a week from when this video comes out that is my is my goal to have this the starter video come out too <laughs> 